In this video, I will show you how I work with the images of panoramas of cinema, how I search for them, identify them, and collect them. I do this when I want to show the qualities of space, when I want to show its elements, colors, proportions, textures, even the moods of such a space. I also do this when I am trying different ideas, and I want to discuss these ideas with movies. Movies then help me to figure things out and to communicate how this idea may look like in an architectural space. So these are gestures of projection. These are dreams of spaces in architecture. Then I open my web browser and go to panoramasofcinema.ch slash search and click on image search. This will open a new tab and load a Jupyter Notebook on Binder online. Once the notebook is there, I go to kernel, restart and run all, restart and run all cells. So this is a Jupyter Notebook and with it, I will ask questions to the videotech of Panoramas of Cinema. It is the version 02 and this one is dealing with more than 1000 movies and around 2 million images extracted from these movies. So this is a personal collection of movies, a collection that I think is curious about architecture. And I say that it's curious about architecture because it's showing the stages and actions which I believe are not very distant from stages and actions that we are working in architecture. So this collection is showing this in a very interesting, for me, in a beautiful and sometimes masterful way. So, to start asking questions to the videotech, there is an initial index, pre-given categories. And these categories refer to places. For example, uh, corridor, bullring, cafeteria. They also refer to objects, carrots, knives, wine glasses. And here is where I type my query. If, for example, I'm searching for wind farms, I click wind farm, click on search, and I get a message that says that there are 200 images with this query. But I know that the maximum number of images that I get back from such a query is 200. So there probably is more than 200 images of wind farms in the videotech. And here is where the confidence levels come to play because if I move them closer to one, <clears throat> the number of images is less. And if I click on show, 16 will be displayed. And in these 16 images, the probabilities of me being able to identify a wind farm is very high. If I click on show again, another batch of 16 will be displayed and so on until I have exhausted, in this case, 29 images. If I then move the confidence levels closer to zero, what I will see is a batch of images where I most probably will not be able to identify a wind farm, but I will be able to identify certain characteristics that are shared with wind farms. For example, here, I see no wind farms, but I see skies, either blue or in the night or dark. I see vertical elements, and I see even objects at the top with certain movements. Now, to search for objects is fairly the same. If I search for a chair, for example, click on search and tune the confidence levels a bit, I will get images where I must probably be able to identify chairs. So these are chairs, these are many chairs, and these chairs, I see them in different places. I see them in kitchens, I see them in, in offices, even outdoors, in the bathroom. And here is where I can start playing with the places and the objects. I can start combining things so to make my query more precise if you want. If I add corridor to my query and relax the confidence levels, I will get 85, there are 85 images in the videotech, and they look like this. 
Now, I have another option here regarding faces, which is just to say if I want to see faces in my images or not. If I say no, there are 79 images. If I say yes, the rest six images are without faces. Now, if I want to, if I'm looking for a clip and I want to see the actions of this uh, uh, still frame, I just need to click on the image, scroll down a bit and click on play. And here is the scene of the movie from which this frame was extracted. Now I can uh, click forward to check the further sequences or backwards to check what happened before my query. Now, there are two very cool things here. One is that if this clip, I found it, I find it relevant uh, to my task at hand, I just need to click here. Well, it depends on the web browser, but on Chrome, you click there and then you click on download. And here it is, the movie scene of my query. Another very cool thing here is that all these movies are already encoded. And for me, it's just a matter of drag and drop into my, my video editor and I can instantly start working on them. Fantastic. Now, I can ask questions given, uh, given predefined categories, but once I start working with it and navigating the video tech, I can start then creating my own categories. I can start defining things in my own terms. If, for example, now I want to start a new category, I just type the name of the category, Shine, by me, and I start adding images to this category. For example, this image is relevant to how this uh, category may look like or may be about. And uh, of course, I can scroll up and make more queries. I will ask for sky, for example. So I can start, so I can continue making queries and then I can start looking at the images and think if they relate to the conception that I have at hand, if they fit or not, if they're appropriate or not, if they feel good or not. So I made another search for sky or anything else and I can have a look I can see what thing, if it's appropriate or not. For example, I can say, yes, this is good for, for shine, for my shine category. This one as well. And just one more, I will add just one more, one more. Now I am creating my own categories, but, and I can start searching based on these categories. These are categories uh, by me that I have worked on and other uh, users as well. And here we, fi we find Danae, we find Dance, Corner, Gate. These categories are independent from the pre-given categories. These are uh, categories defined by me and other users. I saw Paris here, somewhere. I will search for Paris then. If I click on Paris, I get a message that says that there are 30 images of Paris here and that there are three people talking about Paris. If I click on, on show, a batch of 16 will be displayed. And uh, this is how Paris looks like for the video tech. But I can also see how Paris looks like from the position of one user. So how, how does Paris look like from the position of a cowboy? So there are 22 images and it looks like this, 16 are displayed now. Of course, if one of these images I find uh, interesting, I can just click on it, scroll up and play the clip. Eiffel Tower. Or if one of these images also I find relevant to, to my concept at hand, to my cate the category that I am defining now. I just click on the image, scroll up, and I add it. One more, shine in Paris. Now, if I search for shine by me, 
I will see the six images that just now searched for, identified, and categorized. Here they are. Now, as I can add images to a category, I can also delete from, from the category. And it's just a matter of clicking on the image, click on delete, image, delete. And if I make the same query, instead of six, I'll have four images. And click on show, I can see how this how they look like. All right, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you today. Uh, how I work with the images of Panoramas of Cinema in a very basic way. See you next time.